A leaked memo from an advertising agency caused an uproar after it stated that employees must take the jab or resign. Attorney at Law Gavin Goff is online and he's going to enlighten us on this issue. Good morning, Gavin. Thank you so much for joining us on Smile Jamaica. Hi, good morning, David, and good morning to your listeners. All right. Well, so let's start first of all with um, the, the, the obvious question. Can employers force employees to take the jab? Um, well, the consensus amongst attorneys seems to be that it's really too early to say for sure um, what the outcome of that type of policy would be. What we do know is that having a policy that requires vaccination is not in and of itself unlawful. It's really whether you are going to be disciplining or terminating the employment of those who do not follow that policy, which is where the big question mark hangs. Ah. For some types of businesses, I expect that it will be considered mandatory um, and perfectly mandatory for you to have vaccine to work in that um, environment. But for other businesses, it's probably not so clear cut. So at this point in time, you're saying our labor laws um, are not clear as to whether or not you can definitively say, no, you can't. It leaves room for an employer to say, based on the kind of business that we have, it's an imperative. Well, our labor laws are very clear that employers have a responsibility to protect workers um, from themselves sometimes um, and from each other. Um, our labor laws are clear that employers have a duty to institute policies for the safety of the organization for the clientele they may serve. But it is also clear that an employment contract is a contract. And if you are going to be inserting new material provisions into that contract, generally you need the employee's consent to do so. And I say generally because it's not in every instance that you do. Um, we also know that we have um, a labor relations law and a labor relations code that speaks about <clears throat> termination of employment only as a last resort and only in response to um, situations where you have take, followed a particular process to arrive at the decision to dismiss. Yeah, I'm so thinking. So that's really what's clear, but where we get into the. the There's the a great deal. area. I was, I was yes. saying to someone the other day that. Um, particularly because of the field that he's in, that if not taking the vaccine limits his ability to do his job, then the employer can use that as, a, as something to say, well, you're not doing your job and we have a problem. Is that, is that one of the cases? Yeah, I think so, absolutely. Um, again, depending on the type of job you're doing, um, the vaccine will probably one day be seen almost like a license. It's almost going to be like a health permit. Um, I can think, for instance, about the yellow fever vaccine. Yellow fever vaccine is something that most pilots and airline um, cabin attendants are required to take because if you don't take the yellow fever vaccine, you can't actually fly into certain countries. So I think the same thing will be said of certain types of employment, especially if you're working in the healthcare sector. Um, I think it would almost absolutely be necessary for you to show that you are um, not presenting a risk to the people who you are serving, especially if they are vulnerable and immunocompromised. I'm glad you raised yellow fever, um, Gavin, because I did say this also to someone, that it's not new, that there are countries yeah. in the world that if you, if you don't have that card to say you've been vaccinated for yellow fever, and in some instances malaria, you are not allowed to enter. And okay. so there is precedence in terms of having to be vaccinated yeah. um of course the difference with that is that you know we are operating on the emergency use authorization right now right whereas the yellow fever vaccine has been here for a long time but right. that's why i say i think it's a matter of time i think it's a matter of time yeah because even here in jamaica there was a time when you couldn't go to school unless you had gotten your shots <clears throat> to go to school yeah. and yeah. so um i i believe that that there are i mean you you legal people work it out but I do believe that there is a bit of precedence. 
in terms yeah, of... Yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's always important to have dialogue and understanding as to why it is that people don't wish to. Sometimes it's a lack of information. and Sometimes yes. there are actual medical or religious reasons yes. that would prevent someone from taking the vaccine. And I think the message I want to give to all employers is that you need to be sensitive to those kind of situations. So a policy which basically says that if you don't take the vaccine, you're going to be terminated, probably isn't flexible enough mm -hmm. to take account of the special circumstances that an employer is required to take into account. Absolutely, absolutely. Can't be as prejudicial as that. Is there a way also, because in this instance, the vaccine is limited. Yeah. Um, the access is not as widespread. Is there a way that, that as an employee, I can say, okay, you want me to, to be vaccinated, it's on you to provide the vaccine. If, if yeah. there's a cost, you have to pay for it because I'm not going to take it out of my pocket if you yeah, are yeah, required. Absolutely. I think that's perfectly reasonable as well. I mean, we know that the vaccine themselves are being administered by the government. The yes. Past. But there will come a time when employers will be able to access supply and that will be at cost to them and they'll be able to ensure that they can back up their policies with a convenient method by which they are to get, they are yeah. to get vaccinated. Yeah. But All the right. flip side of that as well, Delia, is that, you know, some employers are going to be asking their employees who refuse to take the vaccine to indemnify them, to say that you need to sign something to say that, one, yes. when, um, I'm not going to be liable if you get sick or if you die. And yes. two, if your co-worker gets sick or dies and their family sues us, you're going to have to be on the hook for that as well. Wow. It's a it's it. That last part is a lot to, yes. to swallow. I mean, I mean, you know, there's a, comes a responsibility in everything, you know. And so if you are insisting that this is a personal choice, yeah. sometimes personal choices have, you know, consequences. Collective responsibility. Collective responsibility and is I a think, thing. And I think, Gavin, you just hit the, the core of the issue of COVID-19, mm -hmm. that, you know, you can have a personal choice, but then how does that personal choice come to bear on, on colleagues at work, people at yes. home. And now um, yes. you're correct, the boss has to indemnify themselves from anything that may or may not. And, and maybe that's where it has to go. Before you go, I just wanted to, are there any other issues that, that, that you kind of red flagged? Is there an issue of persons who have contracted COVID and, and employers saying, look, you had it, don't come back to work. Um, are, are, the, are you had it, we're not gonna pay you because you're out. Are you seeing some of those things happening? Yeah, we're seeing a lot of issues. We're seeing the fact that there aren't really any laws, um, employment laws or modifications to employment laws to take account of COVID. Mm -hmm. So one thing we've been speaking about, for instance, is the fact that we don't have any revision to our sick leave laws. Yes. And what that means is that people who get COVID and who have already exhausted their um, mandatory, their statutory sick leave entitlement are sometimes going to work because they can't afford to stay home. Mm -hmm. They don't have the additional paid resources available to them to follow the law and protect themselves while earning at the same time. And so that's something which we do need to address very, very urgently um, in, in looking at how we go forward one year on into the pandemic. I know I did say last question, but you raised a good point. Is that something that can be absorbed under the Disaster Risk Management Act? No, that's something which actually needs to be in the form of an amendment to the existing um, sick leave legislation. Lord have they, they tried to do something like that under the Disaster Risk Management Act, but they realized that it really requires Parliament, mm -hmm. and it's not something which the Prime Minister himself can dictate. Okay, so that's just another thing to add to the filing cabinet. Well, hopefully, hopefully not in file 13, you know, but hopefully we'll actually get some action on that very, very soon. Listen, that's the only file in the cabinet, right? Now, 13. I'm laughing, but it's serious. No, because it's something that I, I, I feel once COVID hits, it's been a year, yes. um, that, that someone would have moved some kind of motion towards yes. this because we've seen it happening. People are getting sick. It's no fault of theirs. COVID is yes. an, an extraordinary pandemic. And for yes. people to, to lose things like sick leave. I mean, if we're waiting on, on moral authority from bosses to say, you are sick, we're going to pay you because of COVID. It, it, in some instances, it's not going to happen. Do you know, Dahlia, that under our law, you still have a qualifying period to get, sick, um, to get paid sick leave. So if you've just started your job, you may not be able to get paid sick I leave know. five months afterwards. I know. I know. So, <laughs> you know, we're going to do some things for COVID. You would All think right. that we were in a pandemic, huh? Yeah. 
Yeah. Gavin, always great speaking to you. Thank you so much for taking time out. Thank you, David. Take care of yourself. Bye bye. All right. So, Gavin Goff, attorney at law, talking to us there about some employee employee issues. At the end of the day, we have to remember we're all humans and, and COVID affects us all. And we just got to try and work together. Still to come, we get the details on mail packs, prepaid, e pay, MasterCard. <laughs>